Hi, this is Erica Wright with the Girls Don't Know Sports Show. We are here at Justin Timberlake's Shriners Hospital for Children Open. There is a purse worth $4.1 million, and professional golfers from all over the country have come out to win this tournament. Not only are they here competing, but they're here to support a very, very important cause, and that's the Shriners Hospital for Children. Can you tell me why you're wearing these braces? Because, because I need them for my legs. I have um, half my legs on either side are burnt. Um, my stomach, my back, just about everywhere. Um, I have um, left side hemiplegia. First time I saw her, she was walking for the first time in her life. And she's one of my most favorite people. And I look forward to seeing her every chance I get. Because I love you, darling. But when I walked into a hospital where the child was, he's laying in screaming, just let me die, let me die. It was so emotional. And then we got out to the airport, and the mom was telling her son goodbye. And I said, no. You're going with your son because he needs you more now than ever. I'm a Shriners patient and have been for as long as I can remember. I was born missing my left tibia. And really Shriners is all about helping kids. And they've truly impacted my life and many others. As you know, they provide care at no cost to the families. And I think that's amazing because I can only imagine being in a parent's position and having to deal with the situation and along with having the burden of paying. This is um, it's called a prosthesis, prosthetic leg, and Shriners really goes above and beyond. And they've allowed me, I actually am a golfer for Cal State University Bakersfield on golf scholarships. So they go above and beyond. I have a special torque absorber in my knee. Yeah, it's amazing what they do. I really recommend uh, if you get a chance to go to a hospital and your viewers to see what it's all about. The first time I met her, you know, I immediately got to see the effect of what the Shriners hospitals do. Uh, because when, um, when the Vegas tournaments, when we were courting each other, we were out at uh, the Riviera Golf Club in, in, in Los Angeles, and uh, they brought Katie out, and she played a whole round of golf with me. And um, I just was, you know, I was, I was really moved. We are here with Steve Flesh and Martin Courtois, and we're out at the Justin Timberlake Shriners Open for Children. When you come out here for each one of these, these tournaments that you play in, does anything go through your mind like, this one's going to be a hard one, or these guys that are playing today, I don't know how I'm going to get through this, or are you just prepared each time you come? Prepared each time. Every week out here is brutal. You got 156 guys playing every week that are, everybody's trying to kill each other, and I mean, you know, so to speak, but we're all trying out here to beat each other. But at the end of the day, we're going to shake hands and go on, and we might have dinner together. But we're out here; we're we're individual contractors. We don't make money unless we play well. So you know, every week's tough. Every week's difficult. You got to play well, or you don't get paid. From what I understand, that the tour is a very great place for family atmosphere because they get to tour with you at times. Is that true? And how does that work? How do you get to? To see each other. Well, up until a few years ago, there was no daycare or anything with the tour, and the wives pretty much, when they came to an event, it was like, you know, I went off to work. And I mean, not since I've been on tour, they've changed it since then, but, you know, the wife would take care of the kids while you're at the golf course playing practice and trying to make a living. And that was really be became a drag. And, and the tour realized, you know, hey, we need more family, more of a family atmosphere. So they developed a PGA tour daycare program which is the same 10 girls that travel with the tour every week so the kids have a consistent atmosphere they're in and you know the wives are able to you know take the kids when when I'm going to go out and play they can come out and watch me play the kids can go to the daycare program be with the same girls every week they get to know them and you know it's it's really win-win because then the wife gets a break um, they can come out and watch the golf they can go have lunch with a couple girlfriends if they want do whatever and then you know you, you know, husband and wife go pick up the, you know, the kids after you, know, you play and you spend the rest of the day together. So the tour really did a great job in, in starting that program. How do you choose which of these um, golf clubs to, to hit with? I mean, you got the big ones here, the little threes here, and you got all these little 
irons over here. Can you explain that real quick? The big ones are the drivers. And so off the tee, uh, if the hole is a par four, ordinarily Steve would be hitting a driver because it'll go the farthest because it has the least amount of loft. And then once you're in the fairway, we have these things here, which are yardage books, our, our yardage guides. Inside the guides, it will show you how far the yardage is to the front of the hole. And then we get a pin sheet every day during the tournament that shows you specifically where it is on the green. So then we'll go out and we'll pretend that we know how to add. And once we get to a number that we like, then we'll decipher, you know, what club goes the distance. Like his five iron, for instance, goes about 190 yards. So if we have a 190 yard shot, we know it's a five iron. If we have a 130 yard shot, then we know it's probably a pitching wedge. So all these little numbers keep people like me that are dyslexic from screwing up. So if we know what the number is, and I can just say, well, here's the pitching wedge, and since it has the P, I know. Then everything's based on yardage. I mean, that's kind of how we play. We all know how, how far we hit each club. So when we're standing out there, we're, we're not just standing there looking like we're absent-minded. I mean, we're figuring out, okay, we got 150 yards, but there's wind out there, too, affecting everything. So even though it's 150 yards, the wind might be making it play like 160 or 170. So then we're adjusting within the set, too. So there's a method to the madness, although sometimes we're not real good at it. We make a mistake, and we just kind of misjudge. Or, you know, simply, I just might hit a bad shot. There's a lot of different terminology in golf and a lot of things that, that people don't understand. But I'd like, if you don't mind, you can give us a, an idea of what is what are the different shots, like a hook shot, a slice. Like if a woman's thinking about slice, she's thinking about a slicing an orange or slicing a, a, a lemon. But there's different names for these shots. And if, in layman's terms, can you explain some of those? Simply a hook and a slice are just two different ways that the ball curves. I'm left-handed, so a hook for me curves left to right and a slice curves right to left. Now, within those hooks and slices, there's fades and draws. You know, the draw is just a smaller hook and the fade is just a smaller slice. Draws and fades are more controllable than hooks and slices because they are a little, they're kind of out of control curve balls, basically. So, um, and all that's based on wind direction a lot and where on the green the pin placement is, you know, we might want to fade one into the corner of the green and it's more controllable that way or, you know, um, that's just kind of how we gauge how far we hit each shot. But uh, Skulls and shanks and tops and duffs are still bad no matter at what level you're playing. Anybody a Justin Timberlake fan here? Well, we're both Justin Timberlake fans. He stepped in and really got behind this tournament. They're having a good concert Friday night. I think it's going to be a big boost for this tournament. They needed some youth that he's provided, and hopefully it will bring some of the young crowd out and get them exposed to the game. He's a big fan of golf, and he's not a bad player. So I think personally, I don't know, Steve, if he would agree with this, but I think he would, that it's a positive sign for him to be involved with this tournament. And, you know, and the fact that he's putting on the show for all the players Friday night, I know everybody else can come too. You know, they've offered us extra tickets that we can buy on top of the two they're giving us. And I've never seen players be so enthused about getting them for their family and their kids and whatnot. So I think on top of the, the you know, two tickets they've given out to every family, there's been a lot of purchase tickets to go to his show Friday night. And, and the fact that you can see him at the show Friday night and then you come out here and you'll be able to see him at the golf course just right here like we're standing and talking. That's pretty neat and that's what's nice about the game and the PGA Tour. This is You can get close to the players and close to the game whereas basketball, baseball and football you really can't get right up next to everybody. So you know you can come out and watch the golfers and see Justin Timberlake and all the girls can scream and holler and it's a it's a win-win for everybody. Well we've had quite a week out here at Justin Timberlake's PGA Tournament. Not only have we met and gotten to know a lot of great professional golfers who spent their time talking with us and giving us a few pointers, but we also found out about the Shriners Hospital and what wonderful work they do for children throughout the world. We hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you next time.